Hey guys, um, this is my first live, so you're gonna have to bear with me. I have no idea what I'm doing. Dear viewers. I am, uh, this is my first live, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know if people can see this. Let's see. It's just my mom's on there. Yeah. Yeah, hi Brenda. Hi, I'm Brett, Tabitha Vi. Oh, hi Miss Brenda. Okay, hi Megan. All right, yeah, you guys, bear with me. Um, this is my first live on any platform. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm going to try my very best. Um, so, yeah, so thanks for joining. Um, I am here at the Pine Hill Health Network. Um, Melissa there, reached out to me, um, and we're just going to talk a little bit about Dallas today. Um, let's see. Sorry, all of the comments are popping up. Again, this is my first time, and I'm just trying to see how this works. Okay, so um, I'm going to give it a few minutes to let some more people pop on, but I just want to let you guys know what we're doing. So today we're just kind of talking about Dallas. Um, this is a little more laid back, not as much about the politics, and I'm really just here to tell her story from my perspective. Um and we're also going to talk a little bit about mental health. And we're going to talk about Dallas's death. That is something we haven't discussed um, really at all with the media or anything like that. I know a lot of articles and things have talk about her, you know, talk about suicide. Um, and that's something I'm going to touch on towards the end. Um, I'm just waiting for more people to pop on. Hi, Aunt Helen. Hi, Aunt Betty whole fam and I'm also trying to see you guys if I am posting this on my own or <laughs> hi yeah so I'm just giving it a few minutes you guys um just so more people can hop on and then we're going to I'm gonna get in just straight into it I just want to tell you Dallas's story um hi Brenda Let's see. Let's see. And I guess if anybody, also I'll ask if anybody has any questions for me. Hi, Ramona. All right. Can you, everybody hear me? Can everybody see me? I guess so. Hi, Jim. There we go. Okay, good, good. All right. Everybody can hear and everybody can see. Okay. So, I guess I'm just going to start. All right. So, a lot of you are, um, <laughs> a lot of you are family. Thanks, Megan. Um, a lot of you are not. Um, just family and friends, things like that, and that's great. So, um, some of you know the story and some of you do not. Um, I'm just going to kind of start from the beginning. I don't know how many of you knew Dallas, but um, I am Brett Tabatabai. I am Dallas's older sister. Um, Dallas and I have an eight-year age difference. Um, so a lot of what happened happened when I was gone and I moved away after college. Um but I'm going to just tell you from my perspective. So, oh, hey, Carly. And my little sister's watching. <laughs> All right. All right, I just want to... There we go. Okay. So, Dallas... Anybody that knew Dallas, especially any of you on here, you know that Dallas was a very bright, outgoing girl. I remember specifically um, one incident when Dallas was little, like she always, even when she was little, she was a huge, bright personality. Um, she went upstate, we were at church, and she walked up 
to the altar and she took the microphone and she started singing because she just had this huge personality, very bright, outgoing girl. And that's how she was. Um, that's how she was until, you know, this incident happened. Um, Dallas was her senior class president. Dallas was very active in volleyball. She was a really good athlete. I just, not like me, not at all. Um, and she was very much like friends with everyone. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Orangeburg Prep, but that's the school that we all went to. Um, it's a very small private school in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Um, it's it's a good school, um, but again, it is very small. I'd say each class is like averaging, when I was there, about 50 people in a grade. So, as you can imagine, that's very broken up and clicky. Um, Dallas did a really good job just being friends with everyone. I don't, she was very, very sweet girl. So, what we're here, obviously, to talk about is everything that's going on. Everybody's seen the news, everybody's seen all the articles and everything that's come out. Um, but basically, Dallas's senior year of high school, it was October of 2018. Um, Dallas had gone to a party, naturally, they're senior in high school, um, at a place, I can't remember if it's called the pond or the lake, I don't remember what it was called. Um, but she went with some friends, you know, they were drinking, I know we're not condoning underage drinking, but they're seniors in high school and that's just what they do. Um, they're drinking and doing what teenagers do. And Dallas basically, well, Dallas was allegedly assaulted. Now you're going to hear me say allegedly a lot. I have to be very careful of what I say. Um, there is a case, you know, we're hoping the case was, can be reopened, but I have to be very mindful of the way I word things. So just bear with me. You're going to hear those a lot. So let's see. That was October, 2018. I get a phone call that the next morning, really early. I want to say it's like six o'clock in the morning and my parents are like, something's wrong with Dallas. And I immediately thought, oh, she's in a car accident. You know, she got in a car accident. Is she okay? Like, what's wrong? Um, never in a million years did I think that they were going to tell me that she was raped. And they said, you know, they kind of broke down and they said, no, she, she's been raped. And I remember sitting on the couch and my husband's sitting next to me. And I'm just like, what? I'm just mind blown, right? I don't, I don't understand. Um... Because as most people know, many situations like that, people don't talk about them and people don't tell. People don't report those cases. So I hadn't heard a lot of about that happening. So I was pretty shocked. Um, so they go on to just tell me what was going on. So Dallas was at that party that evening and my mom goes to pick her up from the party. And she pulls up. And she hears two, she has her windows down and she hears two girls, you know, come out of the party and they're like, we need to get out of here. So a girl got raped. So obviously she's like, what's going on? And at the same, about, about that same time, some of Dallas's friends come running up to the car and they're like, Miss Michelle, Miss Michelle, something's wrong with Dallas. She, she gets out of the car and they, uh, they have Dallas. So, basically, again, this is what Dallas had told me had happened. Um, she, her friends go look. She went missing at the party. And her friends go looking for her. And one of her good friends, they go find her. And she is in the woods, laid down. Um, and Bowen Turner is allegedly standing over her and pulling his pants up and the guy that sees him catches him and he starts running. Um, I don't condone violence, but the guy who saw him then beat Bowen up, but again, not condoning any violence. So at that point, 
Um, they all get Dallas and they put her in the car. Um, my mom takes her to the house and Dallas is like, she's v clearly very upset. She's bruised. She has leaves all in her hair. She's scratched, bruised everywhere. Her neck has bruises all over. I'm sure you guys have all seen the pictures. Um, and she's just very disheveled. So get to the house. She runs in and she, my mom runs in and grabs my dad and wakes him up. He comes out and they immediately call, they immediately call the ambulance that they need to go to the hospital. So this unfortunately is the first of the many struggles that she was going to face is when they get to the hospital. So when someone is sexually assaulted and you go to an emergency room, there's a person called a SANE nurse. And this nurse is specializes in sexual assault. Um, they do what's called a SANE kit. They do a rape kit is sometimes what they call it. And again, these are all trigger words. So I'm trigger warning, I guess I should be saying. Um, so this nurse is supposed to be there to take care of the victim at that point and do the exams, you know, ask questions, take pictures. You also generally there's law enforcement there taking pictures. Um, so that's basically what a sane nurse does. So they call the sane nurse in. And the same nurse basically talks Dallas out of doing the exam. She talks to her about how she's, you know, they're in a small community. Or is she sure she wants to do this? There's going to be a lot of backlash, you know. Um, basically discouraged her to the point where she did not do it and she left and went home. So you have 72 hours to get a same kit done. Um... Dallas ended up the next day, um, my parents talked to her and they ended up going to the Medical University of South Carolina and she got the same kit done there. She had made her decision, you know, my dad talked to her and I'll never forget this, um, my dad told me that he told her, you know, this is your decision if you want to go for it and you want to do this, but just remember, I want you to remember something. Being on the right side of right can sometimes be an extremely lonely place. And unfortunately, that proved very true to Dallas, um, especially in the community and after. So she, as she did, she continued to go through with it and was so proud, you know. She went, she got the same kit done at Medical University of South Carolina. They were, at, from as far as I know, everything was good there. Um, but just right after that is when it all kind of just snowball started snowballing and going downhill. Um, we were in a very small community and it's almost, I don't want to say segregated, but it's definitely like the wrong side of the tracks, right side of the track situation. Um, Dallas went to school with Bowen Turner. They were both at Orangeburg Prep. And after the incident happened and after it was purported, Bowen Turner stayed with Dallas in school. They were both in school together um, for weeks. So as you can imagine, that was extremely tough for my sister to have to walk the halls with the person who allegedly assault her. And... Fortunately, there was a very good administrator at the time, and she was very kind to let Dallas do her work in her office with her during the day. Um, there was, you know, of course, rumors and backlash going around from the, the kids. You know, they kind of drew the line in the sand, as my dad said. And that's one of the toughest things is when a, uh, when a victim, that's basically re-victimizing the victim. And that started with the community and her peers. And then it goes on to re-victimizing the victim through the court system. And we'll get to that. But again, so at this point, Dallas is in South Carolina. It's her senior year of high school and I am living up north. So I'm not seeing what's going on down there. And anytime I talk to her, we're just talking about normal stuff. She comes up to visit and we're trying to do normal things and not not talk about that and just be normal. 
so Dallas gets through her, I want to say, what was that? That's Thanksgiving break that's at that point. And unfortunately, Bone was still in school at that time. Bowen Turner's father, Walt Turner, was on the school board. So when you're obviously have someone in power who's on the board like that, um, and he hadn't been formally charged at that point, he was still in school with her. I'm, I'm not sure, I don't know, my dad will comment, but I think it was January is when he was charged, and at that point they did... did they did dismiss him from the school, and I'm not sure if Walt at that point stepped down from the board, but I do know he's not on the board anymore. Um, so that was quite a long time that she had to be in school with him. So right before Christmas break, we made the decision. We said, Dallas, why don't you come and stay with me for Christmas? Let's, you know, let's do some normal stuff. We'll go to, we'll go to New York. I live super close to the city. We'll just have fun and do what teenagers should be doing. Um, so this was the first time I really saw, got to see, well, first of all, this was the first time I saw her since the incident happened in person. And this is when I really saw firsthand the damage that had been done. So Dallas came up here and the first night she couldn't sleep. And I remember us hearing her like almost making noises at night and she then tells me that she can't sleep. She's just having, she's been having nightmares for months now and she can't sleep. Um, a couple days go by, we do some fun stuff, shopping, this and that. And she basically is just starts crying and she's like, I don't feel good. I'm sick. She was physically getting ill because she's not able to sleep. Um, and that happens with a lot of sexual assault victims and domestic violent victims as well. Um, but these are all, she's just having this reoccurring dream of what had happened. So at this point, it was time for me to basically call my parents and say, okay, I, she's going to come home now because I don't know what to do. Um, I did not realize how bad it had gotten because I wasn't there. So Dallas goes home, time goes on, he's charged, he's, he is charged on, in January so at that point, he is no longer in school. She's in school. She's finishing up. And they're going to be, you know, she graduates in May. At this point, we start talking about, you know, where does she want to go to school? And, you know, I really was gung-ho. Dallas was super smart. Dallas was one of the top in her class. Again, she was quite the opposite of me. Erin, you're watching this. You know that <laughs> I was 100% not the, the studious one. But she was absolutely, and always was. Just discuss this is what I wanted to do. Yeah. So, Dallas, we, she gets accepted into University of Alabama, and I'm like, roll tide. Like, get out of here, go. Get away from there, go. But Dallas was diehard, loved Charleston. Always loved Charleston. And... I'm thinking, okay, please leave the state, but that's what she wanted, and if that's what's going to, she was very happy about it and very excited. You don't see, and the thing is, when you have somebody who's a family member, a sister, a daughter, a son, um, anyone who's been in a situation like that, and you see them just breaking and falling apart like that, anything that makes them happy, you're going to support it. So as much as I didn't want her to stay in state, all right, let's go, College of Charleston. So... Dallas starts her freshman year at College of Charleston. And unfortunately, one of the, I guess I should back up before I explain this. So while Dallas was in high school, while this was all still going on, there was a group of peers who started a hashtag. Again, we all know how powerful social media is, but they started a hashtag free Bowen. And basically rallied like against Dallas and bullied her online. Um, you know, they said, you know, well, she wanted it or, you know, she asked for it or, you know, the it goes both ways. You know, just the basic bullying. So, unfortunately, when Dallas starts school, we find out that one of the ring leaders of the movement, the Free Bowen movement, is on her hall. 
one of her dormitory hall. This person was supposedly supposed to be watching that, you know, Dallas calls and that she's been told to watch Dallas and see if she does anything wrong. For example, like drinking or going out or doing anything quote wrong, even though she's a freshman in college. So as you can imagine, this is supposed to be her fresh start, right? She's supposed to go, she's supposed to meet new people, make new friends. And now she's just right back in it. Um, people, you know, obviously people in the hall had known about the situation. She's not able to start fresh. And at this point, she starts getting very, very sick. Dallas had to go to the hospital several times her freshman year of college because she, her anxiety and depression were gotten so bad that she was getting physically ill to the point where she was throwing up blood or she was just continuously having panic attacks and breaking down. So after she made it through her first two semesters, and after that, they made the decision with my parents that she was going to go and transfer to University of South Carolina Beaufort, which is in Bluffton. And that was a really good option. One of her very best friends from high school went to school there. Um, and Dallas actually, from what we saw, started doing better um, when she left that situation and she got out. <sighs> Again, time has gone on now. So she's a year, two years out of the incident. In the background, nothing has been done on her point. But unfortunately, and you all know this, while in between Dallas's assault and in between her death, there is a third victim. So Dallas's alleged assaulter was let out on bond, and he was on an ankle monitor. And after a period of time, his attorneys had his ankle monitor, got his ankle monitor removed. The court allowed his ankle monitor to be moved. 41 days after that was the alleged assault of Chloe Bess. So again, I said we're not going to talk about politics or anything, and we're not going to talk about the case. I just want to tell you Dallas's story, but I do want to throw that in there. So, because this is about Dallas, and this is about mental health. So, Dallas... At the, this point, let me back up. So we're two years out at this point. Dallas has started at University of South Carolina. Beaufort, she's doing great. She's um, She got a job. She actually started working in the restaurant business a little bit. She's doing awesome school. She's kind of, she changed her major, you know, normal stuff that you do. And she's making friends. She's going out. She's smiling. She's, you see a little bit of that Dallas that we used to see. So I think that's one of the things that's tough when a case gets drug out for a long time, especially a sexual assault case. And let's say you're the mother or the father or the brother or the sister of the victim. And you see them kind of starting to move on a little bit or what looks from the outside like they're moving on. It's very difficult for you to bring it up, bring up that awful time for them. You don't want them to think about it. You don't want them to regress because you think that they were, we thought she was doing better. Um, Dallas was incredible at putting up this super strong front because Dallas was, Dallas was very much like a perfectionist. She was incredible at everything she did. And I know that that was a lot of pressure on her to try to be the same person that she was before the incident happened. Um, you know, we'd talk several times about how much pressure that she felt like she was on to be that same person. Um, and you know, I continued to, you know, just kind of support as well as my family did. Like you're, you are that same person, but that's pretty hard to say to someone who's not. We, if that, if you never happen, if that hasn't happened to you, and we don't know that you're not the same person anymore. Something was taken from you. So Dallas is putting on the front and we all think everything's going so much better, you know. And we genuinely, genuinely did think that things were so much better. 
Um, again, this the case gets getting pushed off. COVID, you know, Senator Hutto is in session, so he you can, apparently can use that excuse forever. Um, so again, we don't bring it up. We're not pushing it. But again, time's going on. So last summer, I went down with my husband and my kids, and I we stayed for a week in Bluffton with Dallas. And I will forever be grateful for that week um, that I got to spend with her and she got to spend with the kids. And they know, you know, Aunt Dallas and specifically my my five-year-old son um, remembers a lot of the things that we were doing while we were there. Um, Dallas, again, the whole time I was there, I didn't see any sort of signs or any sort of warnings that something would potentially happen. I know that people who have been assaulted or have been in situations, um, from what I understand, generally, there are certain things that will trigger them or certain things they can be completely fine and then they think about something, they see something, they hear something, and that can trigger trauma and that can trigger a response. Um, so a lot of the times, I think we don't, you don't see it unless you are there when something like that happens, when a trigger happens. So, and you guys got to forgive me. I'm just rambling. This is my first live. I'm just talking and you're basically just listening to me. Um, so, you know, we're having a great time. We're in Bluffton. We're going to eat. We're going to get ice cream with the kids. We're on the boat. We're having just doing fun stuff. And we never once talked about it. Never once talked about it. Um, you know, we sat out on the, on the porch and had, you know, the two hour, three hour sister conversations that you have. And at this point, Dallas is much older than when I'd left. Um, she's way more mature than when I moved away. And if you don't have siblings, and if you do have siblings and you know the age difference, um, you know that when you get older and you really just start to, it, it becomes more of like, one of your best friends, if not your best friend, especially with a sister. So you guys bear with me. So, you know, we're sitting there, we're talking and we're making plans. We're making plans for the future. We're making plans for, we're going to do the Bluffton week every summer. We're going to do the Bluffton week. We love the house we rent. That's what we were going to do. And we also, our biggest thing where we were so excited because somehow Dallas is, Dallas was turning 21 in 2022. I'm turning 30 in 20, 2022 and Carly is turning 18. And we're like, we are going to do something awesome, right? We're going to go to Mexico. We're going to do it big. We said we were going to definitely do New York for her 21st birthday. And we're going out and we're having a drink together. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not what we did for her 21st birthday. But these are all plans that we were making. Um, and with so much optimism, too. So, again, you don't see this behind the scenes. So, go home. A couple months go by. She's starting back in school. She's working. We're, we're all living our lives. And my cousin, Lauren, is getting... I'm not sure how to... Beat stars for Teen Talk. We were waiting for you on the other one. Oh, whoops. Oh my God, I'm on the wrong thing. I'm not sure how to feed stars for Teen Talk. Michelle, I'm so sorry. I have no idea. <laughs> you guys, I'm apparently on the wrong live. I don't know how to convert that. All right, Michelle, I'm not sure what to do. I apologize. All right, we'll go back to it. And then I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Michelle and see what we can do to get it on there. Okay, so my cousin Lauren was getting married in October. And Dallas and I are, you know, this is the last time I saw Dallas. This weekend was the last time I saw Dallas. Um, and I don't know if Dallas, if my cousin wasn't getting married then, if probably the last time I saw her was in the summer. So, I see Dallas, and I want to put up one of the pictures from the wedding, because she, 
You guys have all seen her. She was stunning. A stunning girl. Perfect hair, perfect makeup all the time. I am quite the opposite. I'm like usually like t-shirt and a ball cap. But she just was glowing. And that's when I really saw her like, wow, Dallas is back. Like Dallas is, this looks like Dallas. This looks like the young Dallas that we remember. I'm so proud of her. Um, we have a great weekend. We have a great weekend at the wedding. And again, everything's fine. We fly home and they go home. She goes off to school. And, you know, we thought that was it. That was the, look at the bottom of the screen near the reactions. Is it, I'm so sorry, guys. I don't know what to do. All right, so now we're going to jump to it. This was, this is my side of the story of the day that I found out that da Dallas, there's a green, I don't want a human outline. I think you can add them to it like that. There, this is the story of the day that Dallas passed away. So it was November 14th, 2021. And that is the day before my father's birthday. It is, God, I was about, I don't know what time of night it was. I want to say it was like seven o'clock or something. I have a bunch of friends over with my kids and we are watching the Eagles football game and I cook chili and we're all sitting at the table. I'm sitting at the table with my girls and we're talking and my cousin Lauren, she keeps calling my phone. And at this point, my cousin Lauren is the one who recently got married and she and her new husband were going to come up and visit. So... I'm like, I'll call her back. She's just trying to play on the trip. She sends me a text message and she tells me, I need you to call me. So I'm saying, okay, all right, I'll call her. I get up. I walk to like my kitchen area. I give her a call. She's like, are you with Kayvon? I need you. Kayvon's my husband. I need you to sit down. So... Everybody knows that when somebody says something like that to you, it's not going to be good what comes after it. So I immediately start saying, no, no, I'm not going to sit. And I say, it's my dad. My dad's dead because I thought it was my dad. And then she tells me, no, it's Dallas. I'm sorry, guys. She tells me, no, it's Dallas. And I did not understand. I just started screaming. No, I don't think I've ever screamed so much in my life. Um, she, I dropped my phone and I'm just screaming. I'm just screaming no, just over and over and over. And my friends fortunately were there and I'm so thankful for them because they got my kids and they ran downstairs and they turned the TV up really loud and they took care of them and my husband and my brother-in-law are trying to pick me up and see what's going on. My husband's on the phone and that's, this is a really weird story guys. So you're going to have to bear with me, but basically my husband like grabs me and he tells me he's like, she's okay. She's okay. This is where you guys are going to get confused. So I'm just sitting here like what I'm, I don't understand. What do you mean there? And he says they are, taking her they're trying to air vac her to savannah and i said okay what happened and you know my cousin lauren says you know she she tried to kill herself so i start doing the dishes for some reason yeah i know i start doing the dishes for some reason i'm sitting there my husband goes outside um, I get, I'm just immediately like walk over to my counter. I start doing dishes and I'm just sitting there and I'm very confused and my phone rings again and it's my dad and I don't look at it. I just hand it to my husband and he walks outside and then he comes back in and comes back into the kitchen and he just looked at me and he shook his head, you know, and he said she didn't make it. And then it happened all over again. 
Um, at this way, I'm angry. You don't, you don't really know what you're going to do. You never expect a call like that or anything like that to happen. So you don't really know what you're going to do. But I remember throwing in one of the dishes, like glass going everywhere. And I'm just basically freaking out, screaming. Um, they ended up, my husband and my brother-in-law end up bringing me upstairs and I'm sitting in my closet. I probably sat in my closet for three hours, um, just screaming, just screaming, no, no, no. And mind you, I haven't talked to my parents at this point. Um, fortunately, my in-laws immediately um, got on the phone, got everything handled. Um, they booked a plane ticket for us to get down there immediately the next morning because at this point it was probably like nine o'clock at night. Um, so... I remember this is hard for me to talk about because I don't, first of all, I haven't, we haven't talked about this with anyone. Um, and it's very dicey, something like a trauma like that's pretty hard to put things in words and relay them to you. So basically I remember at that point I get in the bed and I just sit there, which feels like I think I sat up the whole entire night. And I'm watching the campaign with Will Ferrell. And I just laugh because I know that my dad is like, of course you are, Brett. Because we, all of us, huge Will Ferrell fans, including Dallas. But so I'm just sitting there watching it, but I wasn't watching. I'm just basically staring at a TV with nothing. Go well, I don't know what was going on in my brain. So the next morning, we, my um, cousin Lillian comes over. She packs my bag. She makes me get in the shower. Um, and then we head off and we get on the plane and I remember looking at Kayvon and just shaking my head and I'm like, I can't do this. I don't, I said, you know, I don't think I can do this. And mind you, at that point, I haven't talked to my parents still, still haven't talked to them. Um, my little sister Carly is texting me and she's like, where are you? Where are you? When are, when are you going to be here? And I couldn't get there fast enough. And immediately when I got there, the first thing I did was jump out of the car. And I went straight for her. I don't even think I saw my parents. I just went straight for her. And then after I saw her, you know, see, you walk into a house and there's just like people everywhere. And it's silent. It's a house full of people and it's silent. And they're just looking at you. And because nobody knows what to do and you're just looking for like that person to go, go to. Um, and it was her, it was Carly. It's my little sister. And so next I go find my dad. Fortunately he had people around him and then I'm looking for a mom and Michelle, she's out by the pool, which is, Something she would always be doing is she's just like standing there and then she just, she sees me, you know, and she drops and try to catch her, you know, and it's like the person's not there. So at this point, things kind of calm down. Everything's crazy. And the first thing that pops in my head for some reason is I want to see her phone. I'm so where's Dallas's phone? Um, cause it, nobody had found a note or anything at this point. Or you're just looking for anything. So we get Dallas's phone. And one of our best friends from high school comes over. And we are sitting in my bathtub. Upstairs. Like empty bathtubs sitting in, in the tub. And we just start looking through her phone. I'm like, alright, let me just take anything off of here. It will upset my parents naturally. Um, like a big sister would do. And also I'm just looking for something. Any sign, right? Well... At this point is when I realized, we start looking through her pictures, and at this point is when I realized how much I didn't see not being there. And then I realized, how, I wonder how much people did see being there. Um, we're looking through her pictures, and one of the most bizarre things I've ever experienced in my life is seeing the pictures before the incident happened, and seeing her face and her demeanor, her smile, her, like, physical appearance change over the course of time looking through these pictures and when you see that like that and so close together you're like how did you not see that you know how do you not know how did we not know that how did we not see 
that she changed like that. But again, Dallas was super strong and she put up that front. And that was probably one of the most upsetting things is was to see that and to see that bright smile. It's like a sparkle went away. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's really something I can't describe. So, the next day um, is when I kind of get more answers of what happened, like how, how this happened. I know there's been a lot of articles and everybody's saying she succumbed to a self-inflicted wound. Um, and again, this is the first time we've spoken about this. Dallas was... <sighs> We'd like to think that this wasn't a situation where she wanted to end her life. But we will never know because she's not here to talk to us. Um, but I'm going to hold on to hope that it wasn't. Um, Dallas was had a stab wound to her femoral artery. And when I first heard this, you got to realize I'm accounting and finance. I don't know anything about the body. So I'm like, okay, she cut her wrist. Okay, I'm, the femoral artery is femur in your leg. So no, not cutting her wrist. Um, I, you know, I didn't get a phone call but before this happened. But I know my dad, my mom, and Carly got a phone call. And she was very upset. And unfortunately, they were actually on the way there. And... You just didn't get there in time. And that is something that's just not fair. Um, and something that's a huge struggle for them. And again, we don't talk about this a lot because it's very, it's tough to have this conversation. So, you know, we go through the process. We see at this point when I've gotten down there, I've kind of like flipped into a business mode. And it's like, okay, I need to take care. I'm taking care of, I need to take care of this now. I need to take care of my parents. I need to take care of my baby sister. And this is what we're going to do. And that's basically what I did. Um, and they did a super great job. And I'm so proud of them because that's the hardest thing anybody in the whole world is going to have to, could ever have to do is bury their child. Um, but so, yeah, so here we are. Um, again, I just wanted to tell you guys just a little story about Dallas and kind of how we got here, how we got to that point. Um, the main reason this teen talk is supposed to happen is to, you know, I know the past couple weeks they've talked about sexual assault and it is May, which is Mental Health um, and Suicide Awareness Month. I am by no means a medical professional. I'm not a therapist. I am not a counselor. So I am not at any liberty to give anyone any medical advice. But I'll give you a sister advice. Um, if that's what you want to call it. I just hope that everybody knows that no matter... No matter what the situation, no matter how bad... It is that they're not alone. Um, it breaks my heart how many people have reached out to me and told me their stories and that they have never told anyone um, and they're basically looking for help. And I'm just I wish and I hope in the future we have something um, to be able to help these people. How many people stay quiet and how many people don't talk about what's really going on on the inside? Um it's super important to talk and I just really hope we give the hope and courage to people to be able to come forward and not be afraid um, to speak out. Again, I don't know. We, we never, we're never going to know if we could have changed the situation. We do know if this wouldn't have happened. I know 100% that I wouldn't, we wouldn't be here right now. Okay, so Pine Hill Net Health Network actually has peer counselors and offers mental health and keeps teen, text, teen talk text line on 24-7. That's huge. That's great. I did not know that. Thank you, Michelle. Um, 
I wish that Dallas would have known that. Um, I want to get some more information on that for you guys. Michelle, is that just for um, teens? Is that for anyone who is suffering with mental health issues? Um, yeah, okay, you guys. I don't know if you can see the comments, but the teen talk text line is 803-308-3551. And I think we'll, we'll have to post that somewhere so you guys can have it. But that's huge. I didn't know that we, that that was even there. And that's the problem. So many people don't know that we don't, that there are resources. Um, so we're going to raise awareness and hopefully get that out there because I think if it, it would help if we just were able to speak about it more openly and to be able to know the resources and use them. I think if people were talk to someone, is it for anyone that needs Michelle? Is it for anyone that needs to talk to someone? Just waiting for the answer on that. Anyone. Okay, great. That's wonderful. Anyone. Cause this is not just an issue of the victim. This is an, when something like this happens, it's not, it doesn't just, hold on guys. When something like this happens, it's not just the victim who is affected. Especially, we all see this now. Um, it's the family. It's the mom. It's the dad. It's the sister. It's the brother. It's the grandparents. It's the community. It's the church. Um, yeah, okay, you guys, that line's also for anyone, anywhere. That's not just from South Carolina. That's amazing. If anyone needs to talk to me, anything like this, needs to talk. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Um, so, to kind of talk to you, I guess, a little bit about what we've got going on right now and what we're doing in the future. So there is a rally on the 12th, May 12th at the South Carolina State House. Um, that is for victim services and victims rights to be heard. Um, we all are aware, I think, um, of the situation with Dallas, unfortunately, because she's deceased, they dropped her case because they said that she's not there to say it wasn't consensual. Um, we disagree with that. And again, I said we're not talking politics, but we do disagree with that. And so we're fighting to get that changed. But this isn't just for her. This is for all victims. Um, this is for all victims to be able to be heard. Um, this is for all victims to, for their rights to be allowed to be used. Um, We'd love to see you guys if you can make it. I do know it's a Thursday, and I will explain. Um, it is on a Thursday because we are speaking on the legislative floor, and that is the last day that they are in session. So I know that's tough because it's a weekday, but if you can come, we'd really love it. Um, and what we're working on in the future is to hopefully have some guidance on where people can go and what to do if they're in this situation. I know that there is a lot of that out there, but sometimes it's like there's so much out there that you don't know where to go. And yeah, that's great. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Um, so Michelle and Jeff um, are from the Pine Hill Health Network and they can direct anyone to the sources that they need and who they're comfortable speaking with. And that's another thing. Um, I know, unfortunately, one of the things that the situation has brought about is that the resources that we currently have are not working for the victim, the, you know, the solicitor's office or that we dealt with, or it feels like when people see this, it feels like, well, is my story going to matter? Well, how, how am I going to get hurt? How would I possibly get justice? Um, I, it's a hundred percent possible and every person's story matters. Um, everybody's story matters and we're going to make sure that everyone knows that. So I guess I'll leave. I know this was very all over the place. Um, this again, this is my first time. 
and this is my first time talking about her passing away. Um, I would love if you guys have any questions, you can, I guess, comment the question. Again, I don't know how you do that, but um, if anybody has any questions for me, I'm happy to to answer. We'll spend the last part of it. Hear me the way you know. Thank you, Kristen. Yeah, you guys, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a little happy story while we're waiting here for some questions. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, the movie Country Strong or Endless Love. It's like one of those sappy, like it's not Nicholas Sparks, but basically Nicholas Sparks um, type of movies. So the other day I wake up and I have a direct message from someone and it is a woman who's a director and a writer. And I Google her name. I'm like, who's this with a blue check mark? And he says that she is the director and the writer of Country Strong and Endless Love. Trauma. Hold on, Michelle. I can't see what you say. I'm sorry, Michelle, I, it's not showing me the rest of what you said. So again, with the happy story. So I'm sitting here and I just had to laugh and just thinking about Dallas smiling like ear to ear. Because first of all, mom wanted the my wedding song to be one of the songs that's in that movie, Country Strong. But the other thing is, is Dallas and I went to see Endless Love when, we were in high, when I was in high school. I took her to see it and we watched it probably a million times. Carly also. And I still see it constantly on her Netflix. Yes, you know, don't tell. I'm using her Netflix still. Um, but it just made me smile out of all of the people in the world to randomly send me a message and see that they know what's going on and how can they help and it to be that. Um, I do. I'm not super religious but I do I guess I say I'm spiritual so I think that gave a little smile and I think that's a little bit of positive hope I think that's Dallas smiling at us um Michelle I'm trying to see what you said the past three weeks teen talk for you. yeah so okay so a little bit about I did watch a few of the videos before this, um, and they're awesome. So Michelle, um, there's a counselor named Jackie, and she has been posting about trauma. They've been talking about trauma for the past few weeks. <laughs> Love you, Kenzie. Yeah, so um, I hope more people know that this is out there. I dad was not aware of it and I wish Dallas would have known and we're going to do our best and we're going to let everybody know that this is here. This is a huge sort resource for people to be able to have. And what's awesome is the resource is not just for the victim. Um, because again, this is a ripple effect. This isn't just the victim. This is mom, dad, sister, brother, community. Um, I think we're, you know, we're pretty optimistic that we'll make a change here. And I hope that we're giving people courage to, if anything, just be able to talk to someone about how you're feeling. Um, don't have to, I know it's really hard for some people to tell their story. And I know it's really hard for people to tell people how they're feeling. But I think it helps if you know you're not alone. And at least for me it did, and I think it helps that you know that you don't have to put up that front and you don't have to be that same person that you were because you're not that same person. You're a different person. You're a stronger person. Um, and I think, I mean, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there. Sorry, guys. Yeah, so I'm just leaving the floor open to questions at this point. Again, this is probably not your normal um, teen talk that you've heard. I just wanted to just kind of share Dallas's story and share the story from our, our side. Um, 
just so you guys can see that it's, again, it affects everyone. And I think Dallas is smiling right now, thinking about all the people who do have her back and everybody else's back. And I really, really, I can't stress this enough. I really hope we get, are giving people courage to speak out um, and know that they're not alone. I think it's been such a long time of people being silenced because they're scared of the community reaction or they're scared of basically how the system is going to treat them because it hasn't been he's called Michelle actually for a long time because you know it's just historically hasn't been fantastic but you know we're here to change that and we're going to be super loud until something happens again you guys these are elected officials like they're in office so I, the importance of voting um huge I know that's always a thing but yeah yeah my dad would be uh, yeah so I'm gonna talk to my dad on that <laughs> hey Lisa yeah so you know we're gonna close out here in three minutes um yeah yeah we are Megan it's amazing Dallas voice now yeah, so I want to tell you guys something. Everybody keeps messaging me and they're like, you're, you're awesome. You're doing such a great job. Like, you're being Dallas's voice. Um, I want to make something very clear. Uh, you guys are doing a great job and you guys are Dallas's voice. Because I can put up an Instagram post all day long. But you sharing it and you speaking out and you being awesome and showing the world what's going on, that's you. You guys are doing it. And she is, I know she's smiling, huge smile right now. There you go. Hold on, guys. I'm just reading. Yeah, so again, if anybody's interested, we are going to be at the South Carolina State House on May 12th. Again, that's a Thursday. I know it's tough, but it's the last day they're in session, and we want to have our voice heard on the legislative floor, and we're going to. Um, we're going to have some speakers. I'm pretty excited about it. Yes, Crystal. Good. So there's, you know course a country song but um i can't stress to everybody enough just make sure you might think somebody's doing well you know especially after an, an incident like that but just make sure to check and always tell always say i love you always say i'm sorry because you never know Mommy. if you'll ever be able to again thank you for coming tell me How's it? Hold on, guys. Thanks, you guys. Everybody's everybody's so proud, but I'm so proud of you. I really. Okay. Um, Michelle wants me to let everybody know that Pine Health, Pine Hill Health Network will be closed on May 12th because they're going to be in Columbia with us. So I really hope to see all of you. I'm sure you hear my little one knocking on the door right now, Mom. Um. Actually, I want to say one more thing before we get off. So. Zia, my young, my oldest, he recently, last time we were down in South Carolina, he asked about Dallas. We went to see her, um, and this is going to touch for, you know, how this affects young children and how, of how it affects the family. Um, I never thought in a million years I'd have to try to explain death to a four-year-old, and I don't know how. Um, and I still don't know how, but he asked me, do you need our info or the info for the walk? Yeah. Wait, does anybody need, um, our information or the information for the walk? It's going to be posted everywhere. It's definitely posted all over Facebook. Um, you guys are more than welcome to DM me. I can send you anything you need. Just message here. How do you bring the subject? What's happening or? Okay, good, good question. Um, yeah, and also, you guys, you can go to the website, too. So, I got a good question here. How do you bring the subject up to someone that has, that, ha that, 
someone that has happened to in order to ask if they're okay. So I don't think you have to be direct. Again, this is going to be different for everybody, but I don't think you have to be direct. I think you just, maybe, you know what? Maybe it is good to be direct. Just ask them if they're okay. I was very indirect with Dallas and I did not ask her um, specifically about what happened um, because they're going to say they're okay, you know? But just continuously checking up on people is so important. Continuously calling, you know? And when you think of when you're in the car and you're driving and you're thinking about someone, you're like, you know, I haven't talked to them in a while. You know, I'll call them later. I'll do this and that. You know, don't forget to do that because you never know if it's your last day or if it's their last day. Ask introspective questions. Thank you, Allison. Allison's my little partner in crime here. I'm Allison Brown. She's been awesome. She's helped with the website and started the change.org. Also, you guys, if you haven't, please sign please sign the change.org. Um we have a little over 9,000 signatures right now. We're hoping to get to 10. Um and we're waiting for to hear back from Bill Weeks, so we're just waiting. Um you need help. Yeah, so can you guys all see each other's comments because I'm a lot of people that are on here have been in these situations. Um, fortunately, I have not. And I didn't realize the amount of people who have been in these situations. And I'm very lucky that I haven't. Um, don't immediately. Yeah, thank you, Kay. Thanks, Allison. Yeah, so, so sometimes just a simple, how are you doing today? Just a simple, just any sort of interest engaging in conversation in general okay yeah allison um you she told me about this so um there's a book that she really recommends for the families and survivors of these situations um and it's called the body keeps the score um i have not read it yet i'm haven't quite had time the past couple of weeks but um i did order the book and i'm looking forward to reading it and i will definitely get back to you guys on it Oh, yes, Crystal, also. So we need to keep the calls going to his office as well, to Bill Weeks' office. Um, we are hoping that he wasn't just saying that he is considering reopening it just to make us be quiet. So we definitely can't be quiet. Good, thanks, Kay. Um, yeah, so if anybody... Okay, cool, it's also available on audio Audible. I know a lot of people don't like to read, so... <laughs> or don't have time. Yes. All right, cool. So do you guys have any questions for me? I'm just going to leave it up. Any questions? Any more questions? Again, I apologize. This was very, like, all over the place. Um, it's actually, you know what's so weird is it's actually easier doing, like, an interview instead of just looking at my phone. It looks like I'm talking to myself. But Dallas is laughing at me right now. And now she's like... <laughs> So I think I'm going to close out in a minute. If anybody has any questions or anything, please feel free to just DM me. Um, it's bedtime at the Tabby Tabby house. Got to get the kiddos to bed. But I really appreciate all of you guys um, sticking around and listening to me. Um, let's see. Ramona's putting up the number for Bill Weeks. There we go. Yeah, you guys. So again, just thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, you're doing an awesome job. We would not be here where we are right now if it wasn't for you guys. And just continue to call, continue to post, continue to scream from the mountaintops. I hope I see you guys on Thursday. And if I don't, just post it everywhere. Um, we are going to, if you can't make it, I do have someone that's going to be videoing. I don't know how we're going to do a live, but we're going to make that happen too. Um, so again, thank you guys so much. And we'll catch back with you soon. You guys have a good night. Maybe. I don't know how to turn it off.